in a good way. You know, um, so last year um, I, I had an interview with Google, and and when I was there, I was there was a conference that was Jamstack conference. So I kind of got an opportunity to do two things at one time, and so. Um, I met uh, Matt Bielerman, who is the uh, CEO of Netlify, and they're, they're basically, uh, they're, their backbone is on, a on AWS, and they actually have a rapid deploy uh, method of uh, being able to deploy your site within literally seconds. You just go in, you point, you point your DNS directly to it, you put it, when you get through that, literally you hit the build, and your site just comes up, literally. You, you can see it on the background within like 30 seconds. Um, and then I also met Kyle Matthews, and so Kyle Matthews is the CEO of Gatsby.js. Um, and um, I, I got to meet a bunch of good guys, like, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, somebody that does, uh, oh my goodness. Uh, a lot of the guys that I consider like in the pantheon of, of, of development were like all there at the same time. Um, and so um, they, they, so this new this technology stack is dealing with a couple of components, and it's all surrounding around Google. So lately, uh, well, let's see, 2018, we came to a point in history that we should recognize. We have officially reached everybody in the world that has broadband technology. And that's only accounts for 43% of the world population. So 57% of the population has something less than that. 3G, 2G, dial-up. Does anybody remember dial-up? Am, am I dating it? Yeah. AOL online, you get to, you know, like 10 minutes later. <laughs> Welcome. Hang up the phone! Uh, yeah. Hang up the phone! Um, so what we've always tried to do is, you know, we, we've had issues where and this is where you've seen the rise of, of you know, frameworks such as Angular and React and Vue uh, in, in the mix. This is how you get a Gutenberg, is because they're trying to do more of client side, you know, the client facing stuff. So basically, as soon as you make the call, literally it's coming up for the, with everything, but you slowly start to get it to blend in. You're trying to make sure everything is compressed and just really, you know, nice and neat. Because what's gonna happen when somebody has 2G speed? They still have the same reaction. You still, you know, if it takes too long to load, they're disinterested. So it doesn't matter, you know, what the speed is. You know, it, it, we still have to treat it with the same level of concern. Um, also, um, there was a lot of security things that we were, we were concerned about, and we all know. Let's agree. We all know that people can get plugged in heavy and get plugged in crazy. Don't worry, bros. You get customers that you're like, you have 37 plugins. Literally, they have one plugin that they only wanted three things for out of ten. They got another plugin they only wanted like two out of out of, out of seven. And literally, it's just all these layers and layers and layers and like all this extra code that is just just slowing this thing down. I mean, this thing is just it's just barely getting by, you know. And so, um, one of the things we were, you know, Google's taxing us with with page speed. And so, um, if you get a chance to look at the documents, you'll go ahead and look at like the Lighthouse score. That Lighthouse scoring index is a meter that you can use, and you can test your page against it. The goal is to get between a ninety and a hundred percent. And it'll tell you exactly what's wrong with it. Usually, it's involving images. Your images are not compressed enough. Um, and, and, um, and a lot of extraneous JavaScript from the plugins. Um, and so, we also have a, another issue that we have. So, we have, so I feel that, and this is my personal opinion, WordPress is for someone who is not necessarily a complete newbie. A newbie can get into it if they have the, if the, 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 the you know, the drive and the motivation and the focus. But it's for somebody that had, that, that maybe had some tech skills and kind of got away from it. And, you know, and they have a, a, a decent level of acumen because a lot of people get frustrated because what's the first thing that you have clients that they want to do? They want to get a free theme and they want to customize it to death, right? They want you to do all these bells and whistles and you're like, it doesn't do that. And so um, we, we, we try to make sure that we meet the needs of the client. So my agency does something a little different. We have a little bit different principles. We're trying to be more, more cutting edge. Um, I do write a lot of stuff in, in uh, vanilla JavaScript and React. Um, but I also do some stuff in Vue as well. And I started to notice, and this is something that I see, like there was a divide in, the, in this community. We have this overall tech community here in the Valley. And there's this part of the development community and the WordPress development community. And I always wondered why. And I, I was curious, like, well, what's the difference? And so to me, there's no difference of cutting and pasting something in the command line and then dragging and dropping something off of a, a WP admin. To me, there's no difference. It's exactly the same thing. But you still have to have some level of mastery and understanding of it. So what they've done is, is um, 
they, they've base, basically given us an opportunity to be able to, and it's, it's, it's rapidly expanding. Literally, from October to now, they're just rolling out all these new crazy things that you would not believe. And so, uh, I, before this, literally, in the last month, I've written four plugins. I never had wrote, written a plugin before. I didn't know how. I created my own theme. I didn't know how. You know, and so it's, it's pushed me to another level. Um, so the three layers they, they have are Jamstack is a CMS. It's a concept of a CMS. And that concept of Jam, not Jillian Jam, the J is for JavaScript, the A is for API calls through microservices. We all use them. You know, you Stripe favorite portal here, WooCommerce, but there's Shopify. We do it all the time. And our HTML uh, uh, for Markdown. I'm sorry, Markdown templating language for, for HTML. And so the center point of that, that a lot of it is Gatsby.js. And it's because yeah, Gatsby.js is written, written in React. And it's basically, it does, it take, we go back to static sites. Literally going back to static. They're like, oh no, we're going back to the old thing again. But we got, some of these sites got so complex and so heavy that there was no way to really, like this monolith that couldn't be moved. And so the, the idea is that even WordPress core is on board. They've been on board with this probably like like, a, like two years now. And a lot of people already know it. I used to, I worked on core for a little time in documentation uh, to, 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 to learn WordPress and that was probably one of my best experiences. Um, and but it also opened my eyes to a lot of the woes that you know people have on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, uh, um, when you have customers that, that haven't updated their website in three years, they haven't, I just had one today. <coughs> like, well, my, my site's not working. What version of WordPress are you using? Oh my goodness. You know, and, and they wonder why. You know, um, this eliminates that because it's like all the all your assets are pretty much down on CDNs. They're, you know, in their, in their global CDN. So literally, they might be in seven parts of the globe at the same time, uh, pushing up static con that's pushing up static content. So it does look static, but it's, um, I say it's a false static. And so what you'll see is, is that um, one of, the, one of the, the ones I'm using right now is called sanity.io. <coughs> and um, they're insane. Literally, they're insane. So sa sanity does, um, literally you can, they have three layers. They have a content layer for the content creators. So you know, if your sales department or whatever, they, they want to just push content and you want to move stuff around with that, they have, they're welcome to do so. They have the development layer, which has, you know, your basic your middle part yep, right there. If you go down, scroll down a little bit, keep scrolling, and hit that right there for me. I want you to take a look at this. Literally, it's a two minute install. You can actually, even there from your phone. You can deploy it locally and then push it to, you know, push it to the, uh, the, the cloud. So even if you have the UI UX people, they can start working on that part and sketch se separately in a whole other realm and it's literally all, you all collaboratively working together. But if you have a client that is, that has had a, a WordPress site and has a ton of WordPress, you don't leave them hanging. You still deal with it. You still keep them with a WordPress uh, CLI. So they're, they're doing purist text. You can actually make your own uh, admin window for your client and for yourself. And so, um, with this, what they're doing is um, giving you the ability to be able to, with plugins that are highly efficient, to be able to bring in and just do whatever you would like to. I just did an Algolia plugin to, uh, like, uh, over the weekend. Um, and that was my, literally, like, it, it, it actually worked. I didn't know, I was surprised I could actually get it to work so fast. Um, so GraphQL is, is, is just a query. It's a, it's a query, and it can actually, it's, rack, it's relational and non-relational. So you can use GraphQL to query, it, it, like, literally, it'll create the API for you. It'll, you can attach it to a, uh, a, a MySQL database, and it'll, even if it adds advanced custom fields, it'll even be able to pull in advanced custom fields and give you a schema for that. And that makes your life a lot easier. Um, and you said you're able to migrate or, or even uh, expand the point even deeper and you can make deeper level. Um, what they're doing currently now, they're uh, adding child themes. Um, so they're, they're taking a lot of child themes and being able to re uh, reincarnate those and be able to do a lot more and not have to worry about um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of damage to the whole structure of the uh, project. So 
collective stuff. We were trying to create constant landing pages for different things, you know, like uh, click funnels. The, the, you know, you can actually you can scale it up, kind of get it all organized and have it where it's set up under the aesthetic over of uh, the company. And then you can let the let the people that want to do content, let them go ahead, let them play around, let them you know drop and drop and drag. Um, and it actually gives you a fun environment for the developer. <coughs> so this is just one of the platforms uh, that there is. And they, and they do hosting as well. So you can host with them or you can host with someone else. Um, another big one is Netlify, but they're mostly a back end. Um, and what I use Netlify for primarily is I use it with, 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 with AWS to be able to do serverless applications. Um, so I, you can do headless and you can do serverless. So even if you're, uh, you know, just, if you know PHP, you know Go, you know, React, you know, Angular, if that's your wheelhouse, you can actually collaboratively work together and we don't have to have a fight over what technology stack we're gonna use on the front end. We really, we, we don't. We can build the way we want to build. Um, and I know that if my slide deck wasn't dead, you, I, I would have a, little, a better illustration of it. Um, but it's a Talk opportunity. Memify Networks? Memify. What's the Memify? I'm looking for a Memify. Memify? Net Netlify, N-E-T-L-I-F-Y. Uh, Matt Billerman originally did, um, what was it, what did he do you know for as well? Uh, is this the right one? Yeah, this is yeah. it. I deploy, I, I, I can, you literally can go on this right now, and if you walk through the steps, you can deploy it out, uh, deploy something literally in five minutes. The first time I did it, I was in disbelief. I just was I'm like, that's it? I'm done? It, it's, and I checked it in, it was actually up. Uh, and it also will uh, put the site into uh, uh, GitHub. You have your whole project in GitHub as well, in a repository. And so uh, that's what it, it works with. And it's also, Netlify also has a CMS in it. There's a, bunch, there's a rise of CMSs now. So literally, uh, Snipcart for e-commerce, uh, but you still can use, you can, so now you can plug and play. You still can use like, like, like you can use WooCommerce and you can use, you can use Shopify. They have plugins for all of those. They have, you know, you can actually create your own. And it's, a, and, and it's not a lot of um, extraneous work trying to get all those things interconnected. Um, and, and so we, since we bring a lot of microservices in uh, as well, it makes it just, it just makes it cake. I'm literally cutting down, what took me 10 days to build, I'm building in five, literally. Uh, I'm, I'm spending time, more time actually testing it and making sure it looks right, making sure everything works. Um, so it's, a, it's an opportunity for us to be able to still, because WordPress is going to always be there. It's going to be there. It's 30% of all websites that are built. Uh, and actually, I think that the number is greater on new builds. I think it may be in the 40% uh, on new builds. So it's not going anywhere. It's just, this is just another elevation of it of where it's going to go to. And this is just another part of the arsenal. So what I will say is this. There is no, there's no silver bullet for, for every job and every mm -hmm. application. We know that. But sometimes there's a right tool for the right job, and this may apply to certain situations and might not apply to others. Um, one of its weaknesses, I would say, is that, and I just I, I did this today, was because um, because it's, it's static rendering, you're not, like I was trying to basically have something that was a live feed that was like a, like a socket, constantly pushing information through, like a stock ticker, and, and that's a limitation, because it has to, it, has to, it, it automatically re-renders, but it's not gonna keep that, that socket open and constantly. It may have some issues. It's something that they, I actually brought it up and then they're looking to see how they can test those boundaries with it. Um, if someone can put up another site, it's, uh, if you go to jamstack.org, O-R-G. <coughs> and it kind of gives you the whole breakdown of who they are. Um, it's, and it's all client side basically. But you still have the three levels, so you can actually let some like you know, you got some clients that just want to. I just want to put a new picture right here. They don't have to keep calling you over and over in the middle of the night trying to get those things up. Um, and because you have all of this backed through like a CDN, um, it's really it's it makes it a lot, a lot less a, a lot less layers of complexity, but it makes it more secure. Um, I'm not going to say it's impenetrable because I don't think anything is. Um, any questions at this point? I know that it probably doesn't sound like it, but I'm not answering it, uh, getting deep into it. Does everybody already know what a headless WordPress site is? No. no. Is, no. How many people don't? Raise your hand. Okay. Okay. Can you, can you explain it a little bit more? Yes. So a, head, a headless WordPress site is basically 
you, you, you know you, do, you have your WP admin? So, and you have your front end, right? Whatever, whatever build, whatever uh, theme that you're using, you can still use the theme, but whatever, whatever uh, technology you use to, to, to create that theme, you can just you know, take that layer away. And what it does is basically you keep the, basically you keep the database, and you keep the, uh, the, the, the you, you migrate it over, and you put a new wrapper on top of it. That's basically what it is. It's just, it's a, just a new client side on it. So, so what if it's a child theme and you want to make it even more? You have the flexibility to do that now. And it's not constrained by it being a, 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 a By being the child theme that you can't make a child of a child. Yes, you can You can make a child of a child. <coughs> you, can, you can multiplicity if, if you want to. Uh -huh. it is, it, but you get to control, as a developer, you get to control how much they can, how much they can do. You know, you, know, you might not want to give them the keys to the kingdom. You know, but you would you would give them opportunity to be able to make another job. Again, it also gives you opportunity to be able to recreate um, on a different level. Now, the one thing that I see that they're having a problem with is that because of uh, some things being attached to PHP, and they're using they're using Node and NPM as a package manager, that the, the, just some of those things are just not uh, hooking correctly. And it's just that they have to do a little bit of they have to do, you have to actually do some manual work to make those things connect clearly. It's, it's more so with advanced custom fields, and they're actually. Struggling with, I mean, like they're working on that real stuff right now. Like they've, they've made advances in that. Because I'm customizing a child theme, mm -hmm. and then there's limitations to that, right? So you can't just blow it out as full. You'll have to start all over and just do a custom site. This is your abstract that completely. Like literally, the child theme is a separate element, and you're just you're taking the the, the core of it, all their posts, and you're keeping all that, and you're just putting that that on top of it, being able to. Manipulate the way that you want to. So if you want, if there's some plug that would normally not be compatible for some reason, you can actually use it. You can actually make an API call and do a connection with that particular plugin and be able to bring it in. And it's, 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 a, it's a different concept. So I, I think too, like the thing to note is that so like the reason you do have this WordPress build is that you're building with more of a Ajax type uh, JavaScript front end that is faster, it loads quicker, everything's already loaded. So you're basically rebuilding the front end in a more modern way. You're keeping all the advantages of how you can store and save and do all the things that the WordPress admin can do. Um, this is an example of a site that I know is, has been built um, headless WordPress. So the back end, everything about it is built in WordPress, but the front end loads just stupid fast. And you don't even see that the pages are actually changing. It just has like a little bit of a kind of a you know, intro and it changes pages. Um, the load time is stupid fast on this. And that's one of the big reasons people are doing it as well. What I understand is like quick load times, things like that. Uh, so, well, and, and you're, it's not even, and the reason why your load time is so insane is because you're not actually loading most of this no. stuff. No. Because what's happening is, is the, when the initial page loads, all of the JavaScript, I mean, most sites are loading, you know, 10 to 15 JavaScript files, they're loading a custom font. They're loading several style sheets. All of that loads into the browser, and then when you click on services or work, you're not unloading that and reloading it. You are just dynamically changing text, and text transfers like nothing. Text is simple to transfer. That's the markdown part. You're templating the markdown. So basically, you're making a, you're, you're interpolating, you're making a template, and you're just interchanging it. You're, you're messing with the DOM. You know what I mean? And just changing that DOM model. Really, really easily. So, are, are you are you sending uh, Markdown? Or are you sending JSON and converting it to Markdown with JavaScript? You, it's, it's primarily Markdown, but they, they you can actually use JSON as well. They, they have a JSON converter and, and JSON plugins as well. They even have a CSV plugin. So, I actually uh, am uh, just testing the site, and I'm actually pulling the information from a okay, Google Sheet. <laughs> so you can pull it from anywhere, really. Anywhere. Yeah. <coughs> it's actually it's, it's, it's working. It's just pulling from a Google Sheet. And really, this is an extension of the REST API, right? That's, uh, that's what it is. It's an extension yeah. of REST API. And, and GraphQL and REST API are different. So REST API is, a, you know, is an actual API, whereas GraphQL is just a query for it. So what it does is, GraphQL is unique because what it does is it, it goes out, and you know how you make those API calls, and you get a, 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 a bazillion ton of information, right? And you have to parse that information, bring it back in, it takes seconds, you know, it takes minutes, you know, um, this literally GraphQL goes gets exactly what you asked for and brings it back. And it also, you know, like literally, you don't so you don't have a you know like a, I, I did a uh, a fantasy football site, 
And what happened was, the one point I had to go from two, I had to pull two, make two API mm -hmm. calls because part of what I wanted was in one, one API and part of what I wanted was in the other one. So the fantasy football was in a whole other API as compared to the players. And so the mistake that I made was I pulled every player that is playing the NFL in NFL history. Was that, uh, literally, so, you know, it was like, the, I mean, it was just going, and I'm like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. It, was, it literally took, like, like 20 seconds for it to load. And because I pulled it, because I, I, I had to parse it after. You don't have to do that. It's actually going in and taking it and taking what you want and being able to bring it right back to you with the call. So if you ask for something specific, when you lay out the schema, like if you say uh, title, uh, uh, title um, is a uh, string, and you put, you know, uh, 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 author, string, it just that it's gonna only give what you ask for and nothing more. So <coughs> how are you having these uh, these applications interact with GraphQL and WordPress or using a GraphQL plugin? Then what I do is I use it as a there's a word there's a, a WordPress GraphQL plugin. Mm -hmm. It's uh it's WP GL I think it is. I'm not sure. I know what it is. WP Graph yeah. Graph QL. 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 That's that's the plugin I use. It's blazing fast, literally, you, and, you, and, and you can actually, so GraphQL, you know how you wanna, uh, you wanna look at your data table, look at your schema table? That, that plugin actually is in, the, in WP Admin, so you can actually write, the, write it out right there and there. And on one side, on the left side, is what, you, what, you, what you're writing out, and then it'll show you on the right side what's gonna return, right then and there. So you don't have to actually make the call, you don't actually click and make the call, it's actually doing it in real time. So are most of these going to be interacting using GraphQL? Yes, but I mean, it's, you still can use, um, GraphQL is like the centerpiece though right now. Yeah. It's, it's right, a, I understand that, yeah. It's, it's the center pin. That is, and that's how I like, because Gatsby's like, like the center pin as well. Um, there's other there's other sites, there's other, you know, there's, there's uh, Metal Man, there's Nuxt, Next, uh, JS, there's a, I mean, there's a ton of them out there. And uh, literally, it's rumbling. I, 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 what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, I'm trying to give the call, you know, before it, you know, this comes, because it's actually, a tidal wave of tsunami coming this way. And it's, it's actually taking us back to being a little bit more simple and not being as complex. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, taking all those extra layers out of it and making your job a lot easier as a developer, making your job a lot easier for, for a personal page and, and giving the people that just want to do content, it gives them opportunity to be creative. So the, the, what we're gonna do uh, the, the next time we talk, uh, the next meetup is that we're gonna actually do a, a complete build from beginning to end and we're gonna build a site with you guys are serving what we're gonna be. We can put make it e-commerce, make it a blog, we can do that together. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it from different elements. We're gonna actually have some, some people working as far as doing like stuff on the UI UX end. We'll have some people working on the actual, you know, content end. We'll have some people working on, you know, the, the basically the just the structure and creating, you know, the the, the, uh, the queries for the back end. And we'll all do it together in real time. Some of us can even do it from our phone. I, I tried it. To, I tried it today for the first time on my phone. I was scared to do it. To do it, I was like, I, I told him, like, you gotta be kidding. There's no way you can do this. I actually changed something on my phone, and I, and I was like, it didn't change. And when I looked over, it was already done. I didn't see. I didn't see it flash. It moved so fast. You know, sometimes you, you can see like see the rendering. It, I didn't even see it. It moved that fast. So, um, and, and and that's why it's um, it's imperative that we pay attention to this because Google is going to start stepping up their game. And you remember last year alone, they changed the algorithm seven times. And it's gonna keep happening. It's gonna keep, they're gonna, they're gonna keep doing it over and over again. Because they're trying to push, the only people that are not on board right now, is Apple. <laughs> so, you you already did it, so the, 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 I spoke about PWAs as well, progressive web applications. So, is everybody familiar with AMP? The AMP plugin, stuff like that? So AMP and PWAs are, are like cousins. And so PWAs, are, they're progressive because they can be a, a website and it also can actually be a mobile app because what you do is you put in the manifest of the very beginning like a meta tag, you tell it that when it reaches, when it, whenever it's in this dimension, like it says, it's gonna say responding to, responding to iOS or responding to, it'll automatically remove the browser window and it'll look like a regular mobile app. So you have them right now and you just don't know that the progressive web apps. I'll name a couple of them, Instagram and Twitter. Those are progressive web applications. So now we have the ability to build once and not have to build anymore. Now you may have to do a little, you know, a little feng shui here and there because let's say like a, a screenshot, it may be different <coughs> on Android as it is to iOS,
But the, the grand scheme of things is literally, you know, if you're being able to make this happen without having to do this over and over again repetitiously. Also, what's the beauty of, of, of progressive web applications is that you can have it in the store. You don't even have to put it in the store. You can actually have it load for your page. And there's no more updates. Yay, no more updates on your phone. <coughs> you know, and so um, if you ever, I, I use Calendly for like my booking. And Calendly app is a progressive web application. I knew it the day that when, it, when I went to go into the place where I was like, oh, because it actually loads the same. So even if you go to the website, it'll still put the icon in your in your uh, in your uh, in your phone. Um, and the next biggest great thing about it that, that's the to me is like just the, the frosting on the cake is that they have these things called service workers. And so service workers are basically a little bitty uh, piece of like functionality, like functions that are written in like in that are cache that lay dormant. And the reason why they lay dormant is because they're waiting for the opportunity to be called when they have no signal. So the progressive web application is able to be able to still respond and work even when they've lost signal. They have no service. So it's um, it, it's a um, and it's not really hard to do. The, uh, Workbox I'm using that uh, that's a Google product that's uh, actually putting that together and um, it's really easy. It's really easy to put together and put a server worker and making sure that you but you gotta make sure you remember that. All your functionality has to still translate over. And WordPress is working directly with them in progressive web applications. They've been working with them for years in Google. So it, 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 is, it goes to say that there's a lot of things that are going on behind the scenes that we're maybe not aware about. I mean, not aware of, uh, but they're, they're happening. And I know that, you know, one of those things, because I was, it just so happens I was doing documentation with Gutenberg, and people were up in arms. <coughs> And guess what? It's not a big thing. If you don't like it, okay. You know, but to each his own. But these things are happening. They're happening. It's really trying to make it. It's, it's for the overall good of the, the global community. Um, I know sometimes as developers, you know, we can be very opinionated in what we do. Uh, but I just want to say, just open your minds into this because it literally, it's uh, increase my productivity. It's increase my team's productivity. Um, we were doing. Where we would do seven sites, we're doing 11. I'm actually taking uh, clients that have uh, slow page speed, let's say, and I'm reducing their page speed by 30, 40%. So a 30, so a 30% um, page speed difference it leads to 15% greater conversions. That that's unheard of, you know. So at, I make and I lot so I've got I come to the time that I don't even tell them. I'm doing it. I just do it. So are they changing the back end too, like the way your data is stored? Because that's kind of clunky. It well, they give you the opportunity to be able to do to to. Use, I mean, my suit is going to always be attached to WordPress. I think I don't think they're really going to de deviate from that too much because they're, they're they, they work. You know, you don't want to. Sometimes you don't want to necessarily kick the kitty. You know, what I mean, because it, you know it may not it may not gel as well. But I'm, uh, one of the things I'm using right now, and I know this, it, when I say this, it's gonna make absolutely no sense whatsoever. Because when I read the definition, it didn't make any sense to me at all. I mean, it's, a, it's called Fauna DB. And Fauna is a relational NoSQL database. I know, that made absolutely no sense. Yeah, it, it, I, when I first read it, I was like, there's no way you can't be, you can't be both. But it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, so it has the ability to page like MongoDB. <laughs> But that's you know horizontally, but also be able to uh, have the tables, the, the deep tables, and match the tables like a, uh, a Postgres or MySQL. So it has ability to be able to do both. Uh, that's just one of the projects that's out there. There's there's a lot of stuff that's going on right now, uh, and I just want to try to create awareness. So um, I will be doing a workshop uh, once a month on it as well for an even deeper dive. Who wants to get you know, who wants to want to learn more about it? You have to have a little bit of knowledge of, you know, you have to have some level of knowledge of WordPress, a little level of knowledge of, of uh, JavaScript and, uh, and, and React. Um, and we'll, we'll do stuff with AWS, because uh, I, I literally just started learning how to do AWS and really, really getting into it uh, about two months ago. And we're, now we're deploying applications on a regular to do AWS. Before I was like, that's too many things, there's too many toys. And now I'm actually getting more comfortable with it. What was the first client site that you built, Headless, and what was the reasoning First client site I built that was headless um, was a 
the oh, they make cookies. They make these unique cookies. I mean, they're not big as as far as like like diameter, but they're like super super dense. And they're these all like like got these exotic flavors. He's somebody's local. Um, but what it was is that he was he used to be a fashion designer prior to that, and he had so he basically took all the, the stuff he had on WordPress and WordPress stuff that he had. He didn't want to lose that that content that he had built, right? So he was married to the content. So I was like, well, if we want to put another layer to it and maybe to branch this off and not lose that attachment to that content because he was worried about the backlinking and all. He was just he, he felt like it, was, it had a lot of you know SEO values like that, and that was a legitimate argument. So. I just basically brought him another front end and connected it in with through GraphQL and React. And I use uh, Gatsby to, to snap the little static site. He couldn't even, he couldn't tell. Mm-hmm. A lot of times I don't tell him, I just do it. You know what I mean? I, I, build, a, I build a Jamstack uh, CSS site that's headless that is uh, a progressive web application for them for just because. Did it have a different domain name or it was all under the same? Well, this one had a, a, a it was, he had, he had basically had a, a it was a different domain name altogether, but we, he was. Uh, so then that's the way that the bad ones go. Go crazy, and that was that was the reason why because he wanted to. He's like, I have all this content, and I don't want to lose it. And I don't want to lose all the SEO value that I've gained. I, you know, I, I, you know, this is here, and it's, if I do that, I got to start off from scratch, and that that was the, that was that scenario where it was like maybe he said, well, we can try this. At that time, that's why I was like, it's new. It, it's did it work as good as you hoped? Better, well, better. It, it obviously better. Because what was the biggest hurdle in building it the first time? Myself. The learning curve. You, you know, you, you, it's uh, for me. It was uh, cause it, I was a, you know, this guy right here. I consider a mentor, right there. You know, and you know, and me being you know a junior, to hear from me like I'm, I'm like, well, this is what I'm doing, and they're like, ah, oh, it's a fad. It'll, 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 it'll die out. And so I started to believe that. You know what I mean? And so I, I was like, well. Maybe that I shouldn't really dive into this as deep. Maybe I shouldn't, you know, uh, like look at this the way I should. Uh, but it's uh, and once I actually like let go and just said, you know what, I'm just gonna do this over the weekend. And I made more, I made more progress over the weekend with my backlog than I thought I would. Like literally, I doubled it almost, which was rare. But like I've heard that like the the disadvantage of headless is that there's so many plugins that have built a lot of front end fun- functionality. So if you go headless, you have to kind of rebuild a lot of things that you already take. Yes, that is true. You have, you have, you have, was, you that, was that hard on that on that build? Like, were there a lot of things he had to rebuild that you weren't thinking that you had to do in the beginning? Can you explain more about that? It, that's it, only a theory I've heard of. I haven't done this myself, so maybe you can explain that. So at that point, it, it, because it, it, like like I said, this is constantly evolving. At that point, it had it it, 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 it when it had reached a level of maturity, so you had to do a lot of that. You know, like you had to do a lot of reconfiguring things on your own. In order to be able to get it to look, you know, have that same effect or have that same microservice working, but what happened was like literally it made me stronger in being able to do uh, API calls and being able to deal with microservices and pull in like like uh, like uh, Okta for you know uh, uh, OAuth and you know because I, I, I had to do something differently and uh, uh, using Algolia for search and being able to use it. I mean Algolia. If you have guys that have used Algolia for search, if you right now you need to do uh, literally get the Algolia plugin. And and do it, and it's it's lightning fast. You know how those sites that you actually type like a couple letters and it automatically starts doing it on its own. That's one of it's, it's like that. Like it's just it's it's amazing what they do. Right? And, and how you spell that? A L G O L I A. And maybe correct me if I'm wrong. It is a slightly different ecosystem, but just because it's a different ecosystem doesn't mean that there aren't people writing those rewriting those. They're re- and that's what's happening now. They're yeah. rewriting those tools, and now they're, they're, it's it's caught up. You know, like we went into this infancy stage. Yeah. It was you know those those, those sort of hangups. They've written so many things, and it's literally from October to now that it's just it's let's unbelievable. Let's say, for instance, that someone had an old site and they have a lot of data. And let's say they say they had gravity forms, and they have 30 forms that they've used historically. They don't want to lose the submissions or any of that stuff too. Like those gravity forms, if you're building a headless, will all the stuff already like. Well, short codes actually display. Well, you have to rewrite all the functionality, of even displaying a form, form validation, all the things that it already does. Or is it something where, like, I would rather just start over with a new form solution because that doesn't work well in a headless environment? The latter. It would be, you, you know, you want to start, you kind of want to start over because, yeah. it, you know, uh, it's, um, but it may not be as, um, what, you, what you had before may have, may have been, 
been too. Uh, it wasn't been like like it wasn't metaphor. It wasn't you know it wasn't it wasn't as efficient. Mm-hmm. And what you're what you're going to not maybe you know the exact same thing, but it's just it's just a, it's a it's a lot more. You you have to do some some work. You do still. Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, um, you're not gonna get away from that part of it, but it gets, it's just that it's uh, it, it's almost like you're you get you got a client that needs to cite the fact because the site is old. That's the client that you're, you're, pretty, you're gonna be dealing with a lot of times. For sure. You know, they, they got a lot, a lot of legacy stuff in there, and it's just, and some of that stuff is not, you know, it's been deprecated, but they, they're tied to it, they're married to it, <coughs> and you're trying to work around it. Like right now, I'm doing um, a site that has forms, um, and the, the issue is that the forms are done in Adobe, and the client and I had never had a conversation of whether they're married to Adobe, mm-hmm. because the, the, I could use another form or repository form. You know, I can recreate the form easily, but with it uh, married to Adobe, and they, 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 they didn't give me an answer at first, and they gave me an answer today. The <coughs> they weren't married to Adobe because the site deals with like uh, like medical uh, related stuff. It's a, it's a biopharmaceutical company, and so you know, and, I, and now we're working on the parts of. I had to, I had to advise them because they didn't they didn't know. I was like, uh, guys, uh, is this gonna, we're gonna make this HIPAA compliant? You know, they didn't they didn't even think about that. Yeah. You know, things like that. You know, so that's something that we we're going to actually work on. So it's 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 a it's maturing. So like, yeah. don't hold what I'm saying to stone because literally, as as I said, they come out with something new. They weren't literally uh, uh, two week two three weeks ago when they were using themes, child themes. They just started doing that two three weeks ago. If you go to the uh, um, who said this? Uh, go to Gatsby, uh, Gatsby dot org. Gatsby is now he's got Gatsby dot org, which is the original site. Then you got Gatsby.com. It just this all rolled out in the last sixty days. Is that it? Yeah. Yep, that's it. But and I didn't even get too caught up with the forms per se. But like, as more of a traditional developer, I have you know a handful of plugins that I always rely on. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's Gravity Forms, Manifest Fields, or whatever it is that's always in my build. Those things again, like the things that we've already kind of been used to leaning on. You have to rebuild those all, right? Yes and no. It depends on it depends like like the advanced custom fields. Now, if, if you'd ask me that like in January, I would say yes. Yeah. Now you don't have to do it. Grab, they 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 actually made plugins for GraphQL mm-hmm. that are so advanced that it it happens with advanced custom. That was one of the to me that was one of the deal breakers was advanced custom fields. Mm-hmm. And now they 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 they've already taken care of that. Right. So that literally, that's that's what, like it's like me saying if I say yes or no to it, it will change literally within 90 days. Yeah, people are catching up. They're catching up with it, and they're, they're actually they're actually the community to build more things. They're like 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 build. If you have a, something that you want to make as a plugin, build it. Let's go. Like they're like they're they're, they're just like pushing everybody to put out as much as possible. I think the the repository here. Um, I know when in October they only had maybe uh, like 40 plugins. I think they got like eight or nine hundred now. That's how fast it rolling this out. And a lot of this, this, this is open source. So, um, this, so Kyle Matthews, who, who uh, is the creator of Gatsby, you should know who he is because this, this will kind of give you a little bit of a, 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 a better understanding of who, who, where, where he came from. He originally worked at Pantheon. So, you know, the concept of what they, how, they, how they have it, it's like basically kind of Johnny Apple said that to me and taught him brought it to another level. That's what I think it is. Like, it has a lot of. Uh, the same uh, uh, environment that that Pantheon does have, you know what I mean? Like, uh, and also like, um, what's the other one similar that, that, I, that I've used before? Uh, oh, what's the name of it? There's another one that's similar to Pantheon, but it, it was it, it is, it's nice too. Uh, I can't think of anything. I just have a brain fart about it. But literally, if you go through the docs, so when I was in when I was in San Francisco in October, they were actually acting the whole entire development community. They would literally take like like sitting down one on one with you and asking you about their documentation. Was the documentation easy to read? Was there something there about it where it wasn't good? Was it, where are you having hangups? Where are you having points? Where did you, do, are you clearly understanding it? Where you, you know, did, you, did it take you uh, to go over it more than once? Like they were literally taking notes on it. Mm-hmm. So they were like, um, 30 days ago they rebuilt the site again and, had, and, and with the documentation and based on the data that they were getting from, uh, from the developers. So I mean like, because this wasn't like this part here, well, this, this, that that wasn't there. None of that was there. They've even written, rewritten a lot of it. So if you scroll down a list of plugins, there's plugins for everything. Literally, like everything you think of. You got ones for Composer. You got, you know, if you want, to, you're still doing something back in on PHP. They got one in Symphony, uh, Zen framework. 
Uh, I mean, literally, it's just Java, um, C sharp, C plus plus, Unity. Um, this is a this it's, it's just everything. <coughs> and Algolia is actually doing that on the side. Algolia is what you see on the this is controlling the, the search as you scroll. Um, so with those, that mentality of you know being in pen, I mean, so he understands WordPress really well. I think he was there like three or four years, so he has a really good understanding of it. He, he saw that, that those issues, you know, and so um, he um, wanted to just because you, you, you always want to push, you know, the, the, you want to push the HTML, you want to find it, sit up to front, and get everything, you know, and then you can deal with the resources too. Like especially when you're dealing with like like it, to me, images and font can kill you. And so um, just the way they, they go, the the, 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 the constant, the way they're doing it. It, it, it's, a, it's, it's, it's actually a breath of fresh air. Um, I encourage you to hide if you have a chance, just play with it. Just the, this, with, the, with Netlify, you'll have a site up in minutes. You won't even believe it. You'll go in and go in a command line, you'll, you'll, you put it in a command line. That was curated within WordPress. Yeah. Validated. So like MongoDB, because yes. MongoDB is a, is a, is a non-relational database, and how it horizontally scales page it paginates, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, you know, and, and, and so it goes horizontally, at vertically, that it's... So tell me what Pratt was called where they integrated the rational with the non-rational. Fauna, F-A-U-N-A, D as in David, B as in boy, Fauna database. It should be FaunaDB.com. And that's, that's just one of them. That there's Fauna.com or Fauna? Fauna DB. Dot <coughs> And the, the cool part about all this stuff is that they so don't have a lot of like that. It's, it's, it's Fauna.com. Is it Fauna.com? I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, it's Fauna DB or Fauna.com. It's Fauna.com? Okay. Yeah. Oh, my apologies. The, the beauty about it too is like, the, the, aside from the developer stuff, because literally they let you build and they give you, a, they give you a lot of bandwidth to build with. You know what I mean? Like it, for free. Uh, contentful is another one that you want to check out. Contentful.com. So there, what they're doing is they're, you know how you have your WP admin. You actually have your, you have a whole different admin, like uh, that whole window that you see. You're, you're cre basically creating a new one. Sanity is is one that you can custom build one for your client. You build custom, custom build one for admin. yourself and for your client. So like you know how you like how, how WP admin is laid out. You know like if you uh, let's say you had a plugin right here and I had some like it's nested on the side. You can actually create your own particular, you know, even, I mean, like White Glove, you can actually put your own logo on it and have your own window to, it and be, to be able to do things with that's, that's why they, I don't know, they said Sanity, but I keep saying that they're insane, because it's the big doing. I, some of it I didn't even believe that they're doing. I was like, this, they're, they're making this up. Um, if you go to uh, jamstack.org, and you go to the resources. Well, actually, here you go to the resources. Yeah, go to the uh, resources. Any any other page, look at the resources. Um, and oh, I'm sorry. Good examples for this one. So, look at these pages. I click on one of the pages and actually see how see how they load and look and look how they roll around. These are all Jamstack pages. Some of them are done just pure, just pure vanilla JavaScript. That might, you know, React might not be your world, your, your wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. you know, um, I mean, I, I honestly, because JavaScript has changed a lot to me too. Like, like especially like recently, it is one. It's looking more like Steve. Uh, two, <laughs> <laughs> and then and two, it's like it's uh, it's it's almost looking like React and uh, and uh, these frameworks now. You know, you're importing something like it's it, they're almost the same now. I use a lot, of, I'm using a lot of times I'm using Balma, B-U-L-M-A dot I-O. I use that as my, my CSS uh, framework. It's uh, It's got Flexbox in it as well. Um, and uh, it's built on Flexbox, but it's it, it, it's beautiful. There's another UI, it's like, so then also. So is that, you, okay. You guys aren't seeing it, but like. Every so is this WooCommerce or is it Shopify? 
every every click that I'm that I'm clicking, it's actually going to another page. It's not just like it's a whole page, yeah. But it's a whole page, and you don't see the URL, but this is going to be a different URL every time. So that the page load is so so fast. Does it? So you're saying, it, does it like load full screen automatically, or is that because you just hit the browser? I don't know. With this one, yeah. you can add, you can add, you can choose. Like we normally would plug it. You can see the URL. You can somewhere else. So, you know, sometimes we're so looking at the only operating page. I was just wondering, like, what's doing some kind of full screen? So we don't have that. You don't have that problem. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
literally, I, I, I literally started following my docs and just right away. I would, I would strongly suggest though, the probably the biggest learning curve I think is understanding GraphQL. What is it? What it does? And remember, it's a query. It is a query. It's not. It's not a. You know, it's not a. It's not the whole relational model. Um, there's Isn't a new. Isn't it graph database? It is graph database. That's the next what it stands for. Graph graphical database. I'm not sure. I know David Ryan's a huge fan of GraphQL. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a couple it's demonstrations of right? query. Graph query language is based on, and it's graph because it's query based books, open graph yes. format. Right, because it, just Facebook originally had this closed source, and then they opened it up, and when they opened it up, it was. Yeah. Well, I think we had another question. This is Raleigh, right? Did you have another question? Oh, yeah, yes. I I like, I see that there's many more exciting like, uh, free pack products online. WooCommerce, uh, Shopify, Snipcart. And Snipcart is specifically Jamstack, but you can use it, uh, whatever you can use whatever cart you want. Snip or Snip? Snip. S N I P. Snipcart. So even like that. So like if you're building, like let's say you have a WooCommerce store and it's been up for three years and it's done really well, but they want better performance and you're saying, all right, we're going to take the same site, we're not going to change any of the data, we're just going to make it headless, we're going to build it a better front end. Yes. So the WooCommerce functionality that's already there, you have to rebuild the shopping and the, all the functionality you would have with a store and a cart. Do you have to rebuild that functionality headless, or is that already still built for you, and you just are really adding the headless part to that? Uh, with the, so they have they have they they've made a bunch of WooCommerce pl plugins that are specific for that, uh -huh. and it's almost it's like that they've evolved into that. Where because uh, early I would be like. Yeah, you'd have to pretty much you have to tool up. You have to do a lot of tooling. Yeah. Now it's, it's uh, the tooling is, is minimal. People bridge the gap. They bridge the gap, and so now if you did do some tooling, it would be just like minor adjustments, you know, here and there, like like because you you customize it so custom that you just got to make little minor tweaks, and you do you like you really like knock those out right away. Gotcha. Okay. But it, it's you know because in the grand scheme of things, it's about productivity. We want to really get things done, you know, and uh, um, and make them beautiful, make it fun. And then we want to we have fun doing it. We want to be able to, you know, enjoy the experience and, uh, and understand the experience a lot more. And I think that combined with WordPress, they, like, they, because they're, they're, they're a team together, that uh, nothing can stop them. So if, you, if, you, if you're really looking at the grand scheme of things, in the, if you saw Spotify and, Net, and Netflix, how they <laughs> made that move temporarily away from the, uh, the, the, the iTunes store, the App Store, they were actually working on using this technology in their products. That's why they took it away for that time period to do that, and so they could see if it was viable enough for them to be able to, to make that happen. They're both gonna go, because, I mean, the, the issue is that now I don't have to have an app store taking 30% of what I created and they haven't done anything. You know what I mean, that, that, that's the biggest argument. You know what I mean, 30% 30, 30 of Netflix's income is given away to, 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 to Apple. So I keep on saying React, 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 React. So is React better than Angular or Vue for all of front loading? Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's who you ask. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when I so two years ago, when I first was I was still at, at Galvanize, I, when they taught us Angular 1.5, right? Because enterprise level, you know, Wells Fargo and these big giants, they're still back. They're, there. That's what they were using, but literally, like. <coughs> you kept, it was like React was in the background just, just yelling, you know, like, ah. And next thing you know, <laughs> literally before we, when we graduated, React had surpassed it. Just that. But so the next the next cohort after us, they didn't teach them Angular. They taught them React and Vue. And we were upset. We were like, you're going to give them that, and that, you know, and that's how fast the technology moving. So the React has become such a, I mean, like, it's 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 changed how I think they view, how people, how we, how we view our builds now. I think that just the, the, the architectural uh, standpoint of it, the way they've done, uh, there were some issues, especially with you know uh, uh, like this, using this, because uh, that was always my big issue. This call apply fine, but they, with React hooks, that's why, and that's another reason why I, uh, I was I had to wait because literally they just they React just came out with a new version that is replacing something else that has been that's actually been one of the areas of contention for some like So. Um, does anybody listen to syntax up there? West Boss. West Boss is um. If you you probably see, you probably see some of his, his work like some of his, uh, his courses. He's he's jam like a lot of these guys are doing this stuff. 
isn't React probably the most common headless WordPress build? The most yes. Popular right so now? you're gonna in this you're gonna see a lot of React, but if you, you look at the docs, they'll have if like they'll say, oh well, if you like PHP, if you like Mozilla JavaScript, they'll have the other alternatives there. But the one they use the most because it's like that's the one that everybody's like going to the most. So they're gonna have more information on it. And Gatsby is basically that's its foundation. It was it was designed to be a static site renderer <coughs> using React. <coughs> so basically, maybe how you have your GitHub page, you can use you can build up a web page on GitHub using it, using it as you know, it basically was taking that static site, and now they're taking it and making it look like it's not static, and, it, and it's it's, it's it's amazing. Like you, like you see, like the, the each and one of those pages, how imagine how long that would take to load? You know, what I mean? it would take forever, It'd take minutes, and so uh, it's uh, it's just another way to, to be giving. I, I feel like it gives you an opportunity to give your clients and your and yourself more. You can't, I, I think you, the more options you have is always the better. It's, it's got, you know what I mean? The, the less options, when you're restricted, not so much. You, you, I mean, you get used to it. Because I think like um, a big, I, I hear a lot of guys that were like Ruby developers. And so, because Ruby like was evolutionary. And then they, you know, they, they were so tied to that. So they like, they were, Ruby was like, they made, they made Ryan Dahl, who I made know, like I mean, it made him sit in the doll and like, Two years he, he, he preached deep on evangelizing on Node, and nobody would listen to him. They didn't really start listening. They started with like 2012, late 2011, early 2012, when Node started to take off. But he, 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 he had been talking about it for two years, and nobody would listen to him. But eventually, he just. And so I think that's what this just happens. Is this, uh, React is a big part of that, too. And Facebook, Facebook has, I mean, come on, they, that's what they do. They, they, they've been able to change the landscape. So, I, like, Michael Jackson, who's a, who does the React training, uh, he just was here uh, earlier month in this world. Um, I, I asked why, because at one point, literally like, like two years ago, it was like a few, if you React versus, and then you had the, the side friends that was Angular, and there were little people that were doing Dojo, and it was just like this big feud over like who had what, and, like, and why this was better, and why what else, what other one wasn't. And it's just really, it's the best tool for the job. Use the tools that are best for that particular job. Um, I think that I, 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 I use Angular still. I just, you know, just I just want to use it as much because everything that we use is so it all react now. You know what I mean? Or I, I, I do Vue because I'm trying to do something different. I'm, I'm tired of using that same thing over again. So because Vue to me is more like a middle child between Angular and React. You know what I mean? It's, it, 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 it has more. It's, to me, it's more vanilla JavaScript. Than JavaScript. And so it doesn't have as high of a learning curve. Is, I think is the other, but what if you once you get the concept of you know the uh, the, the MVM the MVC the, you know the model view controller and you see that when you start getting that kind of understanding how that works it it, 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 uh, it makes it different and that's what they're doing they're using that's what this principle is the MVC in in a nutshell the model. But I thought MVC was only assembly.net and stuff like that. You know, uh -uh. every kind of development. Yeah, MVC, MVC, MVVC. Yeah. But it's like you have a, you have the the, 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 uh, the view is what you see, the model is like if you know the structure of the database, you know the controller is you know making, making things like the service like making it happen, and um, so I just did a, a one with uh, Alexa, and I used I basically made some Alexa skills, um, and I basically did a, an AWS Lambda, so. Ser serverless is, and I, I'll explain it brief briefly. Is that so? Serverless does not mean that you don't have a server at all. Let's let's let's. It's just they, they, they push you when they say that. You still have a server per se, but what it is is that everything that has has a has a, a response in a in, in a function. So, for example, you you deal with this all the time. Whenever you call somewhere, and they say press one for this, press two for this, press three for that. Nine times out of ten, that's a that's a, that's like 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 a, like serverless. And that's what you do. Basically, when you when somebody goes and they, they, they click a form, it's like, you know, they click a button, and it's yes or no, it's giving that their response, and whatever it responds on, whatever you click, it responds to it with, with, with a different answer, with an answer based on a response. That's what it's doing. You're setting up all those parameters of what it can answer. And that's kind of like how, I'm trying to give you an analogy of how, it, how serverless works. You're not going to, but it does reduce server costs by 40%. And that, that's a, a big caveat. If, if it's not a, like a giant database. You got some giant stuff going on. It's not going to go. It's just it's not going to go. But right and now, that's it, all in React. That service is completely. It, it, I mean, that's you can use anything for serverless. You can do service applications without 
you would just you do a PHP. Kevin, you had a question? Yeah, I did. Um, on React, do, does does uh, do you actually load the React library in the browser, or do you compile the React into vanilla JavaScript and serve that? So React is, I think it has to be compiled regardless, because it's, it, it has to, the browser has to, the V8 engine has to compile it. It's just that what it does is it, it pushes all the stuff to, to the client side and doesn't make those calls back and forth. When you make a change, it doesn't keep running back and forth making those API calls, because everything's already sitting there. So like, when you go to Facebook, it's you're like really if you're, your window's there, that first window you see as when you log in, it's all this, all the information is already sitting there waiting, waiting for you. All the HTML structure, and CSS. It's just that when you actually put your password in and the two hashes match, then it serves it to you, so you can actually see it. So it's I would say that it's more of a it's still compiled through the, the, the browser because it has to be, but it's it's um it gives you the ability. I think it it, it, uh, it makes it a lot less code to be able to make a lot of things happen. So what do you think they're doing for that project? Is it React. On what, on, on what, on what Facebook. Like on LinkedIn, you're what LinkedIn. I like their UI UX the best, right? Because it's fast like this, and everything <coughs> is preloaded and cached in on on the on the client side. So we deal with Microsoft. It's not so heavy on the back end. So I, I know one one part of this that they 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 have their own UI UX component. So that, that's a whole separate argument. So like, you get to bring in your own UI UX. So like, if you like Materialize, like, uh, or you like Bootstrap, or you like, you know, uh, like I like Bulma, like whatever, and make, you can build your own components. So because I, I make a lot, of, I'm doing now, we make it reusable components. Your, your, your form, your, the basic structure of your form, your basic structure of your, 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 uh, your search bar is gonna be the same. So we just, re, we can reuse that over and over again. We don't throw those things away, you know? And, and so, to answer your question, um, I think it's more of a, uh, Okay, but it's um, backbone JS numbers. Yeah, it's back. It's backbone JS numbers. That's 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 all it is. It's, it's funny how that those two things are still put together like that. It works. It works. Because you know, I, I, I like Express. I love Express, but Express is complicated. When you're trying to make routes and nested like in their nested routes, you're trying to like make those API calls. That gets it gets out of hand. You get lost. You start. You know what I mean? You, you don't even know what you just did here. You know, like you scroll down like fifty lines. You, you, you lost. So, it, you, it, I think that was the layer of complexity that that they they get away from. But you still can use those tools as well. If you're, they're trying to make you comfortable in your zone. That's that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make people champions of what you're comfortable with, and you don't have to lose that and say, you know what, I got a bad interest in this technology that I love, and I, I'm really flu you know, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a Zen master with that, in order to learn this new thing. So the UI components that you're talking about, uh, that that will vary. I think that they use Microsoft has their own because they're, they're owned by Microsoft, like GitHub. So they have their own uh, separate, uh, like a special UI. It could be. Uh, I have to look it up to give you a better answer what they, what they use for the UI because it's, it's specific to theirs. Their, their style sheet is specific. I like Airbnb style sheet. I use it all the time. I go to their style sheet and, and, and put it in put it in what. It's, 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 it works. It's clean. It's metal. You know, and it's, that's that's my jam. You know, it's, but the, but uh, I materialize in Google, so it looks kind of blocky. You know, like Google stuff is always like kind of like thick and blocky, and then sometimes that, that doesn't work for certain like sites. So uh, I'd have to research that and see what that is. What that actually is. I'm curious myself. Now. Anybody have any other questions? <coughs> so headless means it's not WordPress. Something like fault. WordPress front end. You're still using the WordPress back end, or you're building your own custom modern front end, but mostly React components and stuff. Yes. Alright. One more question? Yeah. Okay. Um already talked about this. Uh I think I already talked about this, but that uh customers not really care about technology, like they care about, you know, how the website goes, people can buy the products and all. So, I mean, this website, you know, I mean, I mean, what I'm saying is like, it looks like it's more expensive, it takes more time to develop this kind of website. So how can someone convince uh, customers that this is the right way to go? <coughs> the 
That's a great question. I was going to actually, that's one of the things I was going to ask her. Talk about. Absolutely. So I, I think, DJ, so like his point was that obviously this is a full custom build on top of it. It's pretty heavy, like it's probably pretty expensive. So this probably isn't like, not right now at least, like everybody should go headless. This is probably like, you have to have a special case for it. I think the other problem with it, not problem, but the, I've been in web development a long time. The kind of cool thing about WordPress is that for the most part, there's a pretty good standard of how a WordPress site should be developed. Now, there's good and bad and ugly and everything in between. For the most part, if you go from a WordPress developer to another WordPress developer, you're likely going to be able to retain a lot of what they did. Like, okay, I'm going to keep that, I'm going to do that, whatever. If you build a headless thing, and for, for like what you said, how quickly things change. Now, in six months, they want to go with a different <coughs> agency, they want to go with somebody else. They might look at it and say, I have no, absolutely no idea how they built it. So this is a totally custom thing. You're kind of on your own with it. And that goes back to where you would have to reprogram the front end of other plugins and stuff. Now, people bridge a gap and there's other things to it. So this is very custom. This is very cutting edge. It's probably very expensive. Any agency that does it, they probably charge a lot more to do it, I would assume. Um, unless you're you know, eating money and saying, I'm doing it to learn more. Well, I'm doing, I'm doing a lot of the stuff I'm doing now, I'm using for user cases yeah. to show them. I, I literally created a, a re refactored a page and improve their page speed by 40%. Mm -hmm. You know, that's huge. Someone who's already got a big product and they really just need to have better SEO, that is probably worth paying that much to, to increase it by 40%. But this isn't for every kind of site. Mm -hmm. Until maybe it's all built out and you have your whole toolkit and you can turn it and burn it. But this is more cutting edge, you know. I say bleeding edge. edge. Yeah, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. So this also <laughs> said On the other hand, though, you Azure. said you were developing in half the time. Because okay, because like literally how it's so Gatsby is literally like a it's, it's scaffolding the project for you so much like you know all the stuff you have to do to get developed the dev environment set up and how to get the project ready to get literally they're spinning that stuff up in seconds. So a lot of those steps that you had to do and you're installing like like they're like let's say you're you had to you had to put a linter in and go in, and literally a lot of that stuff is already there. It's already it's like, it's just waiting for you to call it. It's just, you know, but, it, but it, I mean it makes it may make a lot more sense to a developer and like you're saying. How do you justify paying the extra? You know, how, how would a, a customer justify that? Just because it's the best thing doesn't necessarily mean it's the best thing for that customer. For that customer. That's why I said it's the right so, for the job. Yeah, if it's somebody who just has, you know, a, a mom some and t-shirts or something, you know, or just is starting up, they want to figure out the overall layout of their site and how the store and everything is going to be set up and how it looks online. You know, they'll probably focus on that. You just focus on regular WordPress. And then you can make the case, all right, well, let's make it faster later on, make it headless. So probably, probably doing it in stages, even though it would be better just to roll it all out, you know, headless all at once, but. Uh, so I had a client that I felt was, a, that was this wasn't a good case in the scenario for it. And the reason why is because they didn't have an extensive, like one reason they didn't have, they didn't, have, they didn't post a lot, but they just had just, just, you know, they had just content and it worked. They didn't have, a, they weren't loaded down with a bunch of plugins. I think they had like like three or four, you know what I mean? They weren't doing a lot of volume. It was just basically was that they were just they, they were there for the sake of saying that when you Google them that they had a site. So you know, and, and they weren't um, they were making something that was kind of more like it was more artsy. So it was like it was like they were trying to like scale product or something. Like they were making sell, you know, so make more revenue. So it wasn't it really what to me wasn't it didn't make sense to basically throw the bathwater out with the baby. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it was like. It would be it would be too much work to do. Not, not necessarily too much work, but it's like it's all, what they got is good. And it, 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 it would be yeah, it, literally, you'd be putting a flamethrower to light up and light sure. You know, it's like so. Th this case scenario is flawless, and, th and that so that's why I always say like it's always about remembering using the right tool for the job. This so, what? The biggest part about the bottom of this is if you see under Flamingo, there's a B component without uh, S3. 